How you doing everybody? In the past two videos I've been working on modifying the screen set for Mac 3 so it'll look a little more modern and nicer looking or more uh, easy on the load of buttons that the screen has got. And it was just like a guide for you to so you can do it yourself and put the buttons that you really want on it and not mine see what I mean uh, you might have your own needs so you can modify the screen so it won't look so loaded and heavy and make it look better and for that I was using some PNG images that I uh, borrow from uh, Indusoft in which I took a screenshot and I could actually manipulate those images to create the screen set, the background, and the buttons. All the buttons that it's got are push-on buttons. So you push on and off, right? And then I added some LEDs to them and they look real good and actually work pretty well. But I was thinking, what if I want to put like a toggle switch, kind of like this one, and make it click off and on with the mouse you know if you you know you put the mouse on it and then you click on it then it should turn on and off now to do that on Mac 3 I cannot really modify the picture to make it do that because if I use the switch as a button you push on it and it, it'll decrease the size a little bit and then it goes back to normal so I was thinking, well, maybe I can borrow another of these uh, toggle switches from Indusoft and try to do the modification, and I did, but the image is a little bit small, so it's kind of pixelated by the time I was finished with it. So I decided to create a new image based on this button using a couple of programs. Um, I tried Fusion 360, but then I'm using the free version or the non-commercial use version and it, now they have a limit uh, how many drawings you can do like 10 drawings and that's it so then I went to Inkscape and uh, that's kind of complicated because I haven't used Inkscape a lot so it's got uh, some learning curve on it and I just didn't want to you know spend so much time trying to to do it that way now I went to make my CAD program and oh man, I can't do that either. Uh, then I said, well, maybe I can do it in Krita, but no, I cannot generate the, the exact uh, outlines because it's a paint program and it's not uh, to create vector graphics. So I said, well, maybe I can use Aspire, you know, Vcars Pro Aspire. I can do the nice uh, precise drawings with it. And, and then export that file as an SVG and put it in Krita and then do the artwork so I can uh, you know get the colors right and get the effects like the chrome effect right and, and all of that and make it look good. So that's what I had to do. So in this video I'm going to show you what are the steps necessary to create something like that and how to avoid the pixelation on the image when you are actually creating the drawing. So if you want to do some modifications and install these kind of buttons on, on your Mac, Mac 3 screen, then you came to the right place. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up so it gets promoted by YouTube. All right, let's do it. Very well, so first of all, let me show you what Indusoft library where I borrow the first buttons and the toggle switch now here's the toggle switch as you can see if i click on it and i can set it on on the canvas here i can actually look at it so i can probably move it and it is composed of two images the on position and the off position as you can see here now for mac 3 to actually do the any kind of motion property then this is what you have to do right so to take a picture of that then I would have to do a screenshot pressing the Windows key and the print screen command on the keyboard alright so 
even doing it that way if I get the image you can see that when I zoom in uh, the image is not that good uh, I can see the edges on it and when I import it to to the Mac 3 screen editor then you know it's supposed to be transparent but it really uh, doesn't show very well so here is the picture that I created and you can see that is mm, very nice and I can actually zoom in and you know you cannot actually see very many pixels on it now using those programs uh, you know first uh, in doing it with Aspire to create those vectors and then taking it to uh, Krita so I could do the uh, reflection and you know do all this failing of colors and do the shading and all that the artwork then um, it was the way to go the way I had to do it is here in Aspire I created a file but I didn't go small I went to the job size let me see where is job size in position would be eight and a half by eleven so I went to a full page and then I created the the vectors that way. That way, you know, I, I'm not gonna take measurements of the switch. I'm just gonna go by I would say the proportions. You know, I visually see on the switch when I examine it. So I started to create the vectors, and and then this is like a CNC file. Now with Aspire, it's very easy to create a circle precisely because I can position it on zero and then I can do it the diameter you know accordingly what I need and it's, it, it'll draw it precisely and I can do it real easy so once I have that then I just select the whole thing and export it as export it as an SVG file so a scalable vector graphics file and, and put it in a folder and then I come here to Krita and import the file right that's the, the uh, plates and then the toggle on and off with that the reflection and then I just did the one with the reflection there and then finally I put them all together at the end so what I did here I just added some you know fill the bucket with paint and then I just added some shading and you know using it as if you're gonna draw something is what you do so that's the way it's created so when I created the, the, um, the switch, then I just uh, scale it to 74 by 118 pixels. But in this case, to, to make it activate, and I have two, two selections here. One of them is the actual button. Let me move it. And the other one is a, this is the actual button. It's a transparent button. All I have to do is come here and add a transparent button and when I add it you know and I can move it around or make it small or large on top of that other one so since it's transparent you're not gonna see it and then I can position the the file on top of it so when you click on the center then it turns it on and off now the trick here is that the switch is not a switch it's an LED. <laughs> you come here uh, and it's, the function is a spindle clockwise LED because if I put a switch, it, it will increase and decrease the size when I push on it. But if it's an LED, it flickers between one picture and the other one. And, you know, it's like turning on an LED when it's the, the toggle is up and turning it off when the toggle is down. So it's how you had to do it. You had to consider instead of a switch an LED and then it'll do the trick let me show you how it works okay so I'm here and this is uh, Mac 3 running as you can see and finally I corrected the machine coordinates here here's the screen and I'm going to turn this laser on and it's the same switch so it turns it on or it turns it off but if I come here in the middle and push on it you know I can turn it on and turn it off so you can do all the switches this way and it kind of looks real cool now if you can see here there's no bleed out 
on the edges of the switch to the screen. With the other switch, it didn't look that good. This one looks a little bit better, so this is the way to do it. Anyway, this is what uh, I wanted to show you how to do this. You can put all the switches as a toggle switches if you want, and you can put an LED beside it. I hope this helps somebody that is trying to experiment like I do, just to see if it works. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.